purpose that you're after. But I'm sorry to disappoint you. We come here for one sole purpose, with one sincere intention. Only to bring people closer and closer to the worship of our God and your God. If you want to worship other than God, or not to worship God at all, that is your choice. That is absolutely your choice. There is nothing in here that will prevent you from following your own desires or your own religion or your own ideology. But we can engage with you in a discussion. But that discussion has to be an intellectual discussion, not a discussion where you come here and you preach like you do in your churches, or you shout and you make noises. No. We want to have an information exchange where I learn from you and you perhaps learn from me and from us. In this way, we can live in tolerance and mutual understanding so that the hatred that is often generated from these schisms, from this drama, will be away. I'm sure you've heard of many dramas that are happening in Speaker's Corner. People try to incite the Muslim youth who haven't been exposed to this onslaught attacks on the Quran by drilling holes in the Quran, desecrating the Quran, writing the Quran and making a covering of your shoes or eating the pages of the Quran. Come on, people. Those people who do that, you know they are even worse than children in their behavior. Children don't do these things out of intellectual maturity. But those people who are adults and doing this, you know something is wrong in their intellectual faculty. They are almost on the border of being insane. This is a sign of insanity. This is not a sign where you are being civilized in your approach, in your discussion, in your engagement with the Muslims. If you want to criticize Islam, who's stopping you? Criticize. But is your criticism justified? Is your criticism valid? That is what we are here to discuss with you, along with you. Come and talk to us, oh, Islam is all about violence. Really? You as a Christian telling us Muslim, Islam is all about violence. And your book, your book is all about violence. The whole Old Testament depicts God is a God of war, a Jesus, man of war. Jesus. It's Jesus. He commands you to go and kill women, children, livestock, Donkey. babies. And yet you come and tell us Islam is violent? Where was the violence of Islam 200 years ago, 300 years ago? Why was Islam known then in Europe, elsewhere? Islam is the religion of peace. It's only in the modern times that people are saying Islam is violent because people are seeing Islam. Rather, Muslims, rather, some Muslims, a fringe group, taking on their own hands out of desperation, out of frustration, and then going about doing all these evil things, killing innocent people. But where was this happening 300 years ago? Where was this happening in Islamic Spain, where Muslims and Christians and Jews were living in harmony, peace, in peace, together, side by side? A church stood in front of the street on that side and a mosque on this side and still there for hundreds of thousands of years. Where did you have that tolerance? Because it was from Islam. Islam allowed this mutual tolerance. But when some people took the power and they dismantled the Islamic authoritative state version, where Islam was removed from the state implementation, and then other people took power, that's when you found that other people were committing violence against each other. But when Muslims were under the rule, the Jewish people, our cousins, they fled from the persecution and oppression of the Christians and came to live under Muslim rule. That's what we're talking about. So if you want to...
with us and we will show you that your criticism is unjustified. And if there are vi valid criticism, like honor killing, which I would agree with you, there is no such thing in Islam. We can work together to remove this oppression in our communities. Just because something happens in your family, you kill them. Islam doesn't condone that. That is indeed a valid criticism. But you can't throw the baby with the bathwater by blaming Islam through the actions of certain misguided Muslims here and there. In terms of percentage of the Muslim population, what percent do they occupy? Those fringe groups? 0 0.001%. They're not even 1%. Yeah. And then you identify that as a trait of the Muslim community. So I don't want to make it too long, but I want to really invite people to come back to the understanding which will bring us closer. Not to be afraid of Islam because the media is totally somehow informing you with the negative image of Islam. And it consolidates you by the actions of the people that you see. We want you to investigate Islam from its own sources. Since when did you pick up a Quran? and read the verses that you heard within the context. Since when you read the Quran and you said, actually, this is exactly what the Quran says, but what I heard is not what people are telling me. Did you do that? Have you read the biography of the Prophet You consider him as an immoral person. You consider him not a role model for humanity. But what do you know about him other than what people are spreading lies and rumors and totally misinformation about him? When Prophet Muhammad وسلم, opened up Mecca after the 10 years or 13 years of persecution, initially his life was in danger. So was his people. Yeah. Eventually he had to migrate to a place called Medina, Yathrib, to a different city. And when he had the political authority and the power, and he came and then opened up Mecca again, he conquered Mecca, if you want to use this word. The people who oppressed him killed his people, people who murdered his people. What did he do to them? Did he massacre them all? Like they massacred him, his, 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 his people, the Muslims? No people. Go and find out from the historical records what happened. He gave them a general pardon, forgiveness. He gave them forgiveness. Sorry, I'm going to play Asif. Yeah. Okay, carry on, carry on. Forgiveness. Who on earth would act like that? Other than someone who has been trained and molded and formed by the teaching and guidance of the Creator Himself. So I'm afraid that you haven't studied our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as he should be studied. You have not studied the Quran. You pick up the Quran and read on the surface level and you think you've understood it. We are merely asking you to read the Quran in the languages that you are able to and consult as many translations as possible within that language. Then you can get the gist of the message. When the Quran says, when your parents attain old age, do not even say oof to them but extend the wings of mercy and say, you know, you know, have mercy on them as they had mercy on us when we were young. We do not send our parents, our father and mother when they reach old age to old people's home. Where did the idea come from? Where did the idea come from that when your parents reach old age, you throw them away? And guess what? You suddenly remember, oh, I did not send the Christmas card last year. 
that's how you deal with your parents? This is the love and mercy that you talk about? Ignore me touching the mask because I'm going to change it later. I'm not going to touch someone else's hands after that. So you talk about love and mercy and yet you don't show to your parents? When the Quran says, be just and be upright in your testimony, even if it is against you and your own relatives. Did you know that? You have to stand upright and give true testimony with truthfulness and justice, even if it goes against you, your own interest and your family and your relatives. Can you get a better system of justice than this? So why do you think the Quran is something alien to you? Why do you think the Quran is something that doesn't have anything for you? The Quran says, oh people, do not insult other gods, false gods, lest they insult Allah. We do not have the right from Allah to insult other gods even though they are false. We can engage with you in a critical discussion, in a criticism, but we're not insulting you. We cannot insult Prophet Isa Islam, Prophet Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, because if we did, our Islam will be at ruins. We cannot insult a prophet or a messenger that Allah, our God, has sent in the past. So when you realize Muslims cannot be like those Charlie Hebdo's committing caricature of the religious figures, we can't do that. We can't do that about Moses, the prophet. We can do that about Jesus, the prophet, Abraham, or any of the prophets of God. May God's peace be on them. We cannot mock them. We cannot be sarcastic in their teachings. The things that you have heard about the teachings of those prophets and messengers are perhaps coming from a religion which has been corrupted with. That is why you see those religions say, Prophet Noah or Nuh السلام, slept with his daughters, Audhu Billah, when he was drunk or made drunk by his daughters. We don't believe that this is indeed a historical event as narrated in some of the books. These are lies that have been propagated in those books for theological reasons. God doesn't choose his prophets and messengers as guide to people and they themselves are misguided. Imagine people, I want to just engage with you now. Imagine you go to a doctor or you want to go to a doctor and you need a heart operation. You need a cardiac bypass. And you go to a doctor, and that doctor, you know, is a fake one, doesn't know anything about medicine or surgery. Would you trust your life? Would you trust your life in that doctor to operate on your heart? I would not. Neither would you. Because you know this person would make your life and take your life, and in fact, bring your life into danger because that person is not someone who is knowledgeable in the art or science of surgery and medicine. Likewise, if God appointed prophets and messengers who themselves were drunk and misguided and committing all these evil things, who on the right mind, I'm not speaking to you, who in the right mind, I do apologize for the screeching that you hear from those creatures of God on the spa. So, you are talking about Muhammad So, I was talking about who in the right mind is that the case? Who in the right mind would believe in a prophet of God who himself is sleeping with his own daughters? Do you see something? How in right mind? There are some people. 
it is quiet, okay, um, then go to the Do you to mind go to your own place? No, sir, this is speaker's corner. I don't like yes, you. Come here, you go over there. So, so basically, these people so have become it? heckless. Do you have a problem? These people have, have the top of a child. relegated themselves problem, to the level of heckless because no one listens to them. No Muslims giving them any time. No Muslims are discussing with them and they feel oh, empty in their hearts. The they have to come to our platform Christian. to Muslims talk about it. Of so now, so, as we were saying, we, we as Muslims are telling you, because you don't have would you anything follow so you to a prophet or would a messenger, someone? Who sleeps with his own daughters? So we say those people, those people who have intellectual maturity, we invite you. We invite you to be people of knowledge. We invite you to be the people of intellect. And we invite you to the people be the people of sincerity. So that. If you are sincere, then you would know that God would guide those who are sincere. And you would know that God would certainly give ways of guidance to those who seek his guidance. Now, ignore Don't even show this picture. Now, this picture looks like Hatun. That's Hatun in the picture. That's Hatun in the picture. Shame on Muhammad. No, this is Hatun. Hatun is a beer. So now, people, I would like you to understand the picture that you see is the picture of this lady. That's her. Child if you want molester. to imagine who this is, child that's her. That's her. Now, child molester a prophet. Remember, you Muhammad, we want to invite you. Shame on We want to invite you to Would worship a God that doesn't Would become a rot. Don't worship a God if, that becomes a rot. If you oh, are, don't worship a God if you that are becomes a sunnah. If you are following a sunnah of this, don't worship a God that becomes an elephant. If you are following the sunnah of this prophet, don't worship a God that becomes this prophet a monkey is a child molester. Don't worship a God that becomes this a man. Prophet is don't worship a God. That becomes a woman with a beard or otherwise. Would you Would you consider with Maria worshiping? He was beaten. Would you consider worshiping this table? Muhammad got beaten. Would you consider worshiping my coach? Ah, brother, brother, why are you engaging in this? Allah has created many creatures, right? You do not have to be engaging with every single creature of God, right? Some creatures Allah endowed with knowledge and wisdom, intelligence and guidance. Others, they chose their own misguidance. Some creatures are right. created with so, no knowledge. So now, as we are, brother, brother, Okay. So I'm going to give her a rest here because you have enough speaking in your ears, and I apologize. I am Jahel, so our nations are Jahel. As-salamu ala man ittiba al-huda.